Hi there, I'm Garrett, I'm from Chainlift, and I'm here to show off a new framework called LiftKit. LiftKit is a framework that makes it really easy to build quickly, it's hard to make it look ugly, and it's really, really easy to customize. So to demo this, I went on Reddit and asked for volunteers. Momentum reached out. Momentum is a suite of AI-powered fundraising tools. Thank you for letting us take a look at your landing page today. Now, I wanna keep this short, so we're just gonna focus on this hero section here. All right, so I'm gonna swap this over to a little split screen view so you guys can easily see what I'm doing. And the first thing we need to do is customize the kit. Now, it's easiest to start with color, and I'm looking at their site when I go into variables, they don't really have a clear primary brand color. I mean, it's obviously either red or orange. It's probably red, but I'm going to eye drop the color from here. And then instead of manually updating all of these swatches, I'm gonna just update the whole color system at once. And to do that, I'm going to use Chainlift Color. Chainlift Color is an application that uses a dynamic color algorithm to generate themes kind of on the spot. When I have it here, I put in my primary color and it outputs both a light and a dark theme with all of the colors that I need neatly organized into groups. I'll make another video to explain how all of this works, but for now, all you need to know is that I'm amazing. We also wanna make sure that we're getting these other colors in here though. The algorithm will naturally make secondary just a desaturated version of whatever your primary swatch is, and it'll try to find a complementary tone for tertiary, but we can manually set those, which I'm going to do, by taking the uh, this slate gray right here. I'll pass that in for tertiary, and my secondary color, you know what? I'm gonna bring my own goldenrod because I need it to be more yellow. And there we go. This looks like a good palette. Let's save it to the designer and then watch what happens in the background. You ready for this? It's awesome. So when I click on save to designer, you can see in real time how all of the color swatches in the background are getting updated. The whole scheme. And all of these components are already tied to those colors. So everything from the neutrals to the semantic tones for error, warning, success, and info, to your brand palette with primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, they're all taken care of. So now that that's out of the way, all that remains is to update the typography. I'm gonna update that by checking to see what their main typeface is. Over here, it looks like it's mulish, mullish, probably mulish, which luckily for me, I already know is a Google font. So I installed it before I did this. And I just have to go to the main body element select the main root body tag, and then change the font family to Mulish. Let's take a look at our new type system now. Everything is pretty much preserved. These typefaces are in perfect proportion to one another, and that will stay the same no matter what font family you choose. So, we've got our color, our typography is out of the way, and that actually already does it for us. All these little UI components, all these colors, they're just branded. Everything has been customized completely around the target kit, along with the state layers that handle hover actions on button elements, to snack bars and the navigation menu down here. Let's move on and start actually working on that layout. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop in my navbar component and the global CSS. Now, I do have to admit, I cheated a little bit already. I put the correct labels under here, but all I've done is change the text. The padding, the card for the drop down menu, and the way that these hover actions are handling, they're all baked into the lift kit navbar component already. This means all we need to do is swap out the image, which I'm gonna do right here. I went ahead and downloaded the logo earlier. So, once the navigation is in place, we need to put in a section for the actual hero section itself. So, I'm going to put in a section block, and I'm gonna give this a class of section default. That sets the default padding for that section. I'm also going to go in and I'm gonna add a container. I'm gonna name that one container default. Finally, inside of this, I'm gonna put a grid because when I look at the source material here, I see two columns and I don't like using columns. Don't ever make me use columns. To standardize my grid, I'm gonna give it a class grid followed by columns two, because there's two columns. I'm gonna start by dropping in a card. The built-in default card component and upon it, appearing, I'm gonna immediately detach that instance, remove all of these unnecessary classes, and just start deleting the things that I don't need. This needs to change to an H1, and it needs to be bigger, so I'm gonna give it a class of display one bold. This also needs to be bigger. I'm gonna skip, go a level down in the type hierarchy, so instead of display two, it's gonna be title A. I'm gonna change this to the actual copy here and I'm gonna delete this little button row. 
Now, they have no label here, and that is not a good practice, but for the sake of fidelity, I'm gonna remove it. And then I'm going to set the bottom margin on this to be mm, large. And then this form needs to be arranged horizontally. So I'm gonna wrap this input, cut the button, paste it in the wrap I just made, and give the wrap a class of display flex H. We need to align the items to the center and establish a gap of mm, large. This little spacing is being caused by a margin on the bottom of the input field, so we'll just remove that. I mean, this looks pretty good to me. We are gonna want to change the color of this button. When you wanna change the background color, you type in background, then the color mode. So is it light or dark? Light. And remember, tertiary is our accent color. So I'm just gonna change it to tertiary. It knows how to handle setting the appropriate text color based on what the background color is, by the way. Now for these guys. And these cards are custom, so it's gonna be a little weird, but I happen to know, because I've used LibKit a lot, also I made it, that there's a card for testimonials that's pretty close to what these already look like. The placeholder photo is gonna be the Chainlift logo, but I'll detach the instance here, and I'm going to do a couple of things. These cards are unique because they have an icon badge in the top right. Some of them have stickers, some of them don't, and some of them have this little ribbon right here. Gonna give the paragraph a class of label bold because that font style just looks the most optically similar to me. And I'm gonna assign the wrap a display value of flex V. Now normally I could just come in here and align the items to the center. If I wanted to do that, I would do it like that. But I can also take this as an opportunity to make a custom class. I'm gonna call it Home Hero Ribbon. And the reason I wanna do that is because I'm not really gonna have to apply this anywhere else. Uh, I also might not have a good reason. I don't need a good reason. This is my framework. This is my site, and I'm gonna build my way. I'll show you another way that you can assign these sizes. You could just set the top and the bottom padding by using your uh, margin utility classes on the child. You can use uh, padding utility classes uh, like this if you wanted to, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna bake a lot of this in because I'm not gonna really have to do this anywhere else. Um, I'm going to use preset variables for medium to assign the padding there. And since this card has a padding value of 1.129 EM and the Home Hero Ribbon class has the default base font size, I'm just going to cheat a little bit and do some negative margins. So I'm going to follow it up finally by simply applying a background color variable which is equal to a primary container on the light color scheme. It's pretty much there. Now all I have to do is drop in a sticker component, detach that instance, uh, put it in a wrapped div with the subheading, which I'm going to apply, you guessed it, a display class of flex H. Swap this to be on the right, and of course, align items to the center. We'll then give it a gap large, and we're almost good to go. I'm just gonna change the background of this sticker to be the uh, light schemes info container. And it looks about optically similar. Now I'm gonna change the icon. This is really cool, watch this. I can just change the icon by doing this. Watch, if I just happen to know what the name is, like a spyglass, I guess, is gonna be called search. Looks like I was right. And it's gonna render it automatically. That makes things a lot easier. Now the spacing is still a little bit off here. Also, this doesn't need to be red, so I'm gonna remove that combo class. I'm gonna change this to uh, John Doe. This is a mock-up after all. Now you, I am gonna cheat. Margin top. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, it just needs a drop shadow. I'm gonna give it shadow too. Let's just drop in an arbitrary icon component because we still gotta deal with these guys up here. Now I'm going to wrap that in a div and I'm gonna give it a special class of home hero icon. I'm gonna give it some certain properties. I'm gonna connect its background color to be light uh, surface container lowest. That's always gonna be pure white. I'm gonna tell it that it is an absolutely positioned element with display set to flex, vertical, align to the center and justify everything to the center. Put it up in the top right. I'm gonna add some padding here, but first the icon's too small, so it's controlled by the font size. So I'm gonna set the font size to 1.618 EM. That looks good to me. And now the padding, I'm just gonna try 0.272. A little golden ratio there, or the, the square root, I should say. 
border radius is now gonna be 100 EMs. That guarantees it'll be a perfect circle and I'm just gonna give it the default drop shadow there. Now I will finally just offset it very slightly by negative five on the top and then negative four on the right. Actually, let's bring that down to like, yeah, negative four both sides. That works for me. So last, let's just, oh, let's just detach this. Uh, I think that's called speed. That's close enough. So the next thing you might be wondering is what am I gonna do about having these three cards? All I'm gonna do is just nest another grid in here. Guess what? Wrapping that card, guess what? Grid column three. And then you are going to have a column span of two. I'm gonna make two copies. And then for the last ones, I'm just gonna apply manual ranges of columns from one to three, I mean two to three, and then the other one's just gonna stay wherever it is. My one last little idea, oh, I also need to change this. Did you guys know that the material symbol name for Snowflake is AC unit, by the way? I hope that doesn't cause problems for accessibility. That would be a nightmare. I think we're good. I obviously could update the you know text here, probably should, but the purpose of this is just to demo, so. So, what do we do next? Well, there's really only one more thing left to show you, and that's how chain of color can be used dynamically in embedded code. See, in the read-only file, all of these little curves that are forming this are individual SVGs. They're a parallax component. They're stacked on top of each other like this. And we can certainly do it that way. It's probably a very good idea to do it that way. But did you know that SVG images are just code? I happen to have the code for an SVG that I made earlier, which looks a lot like this or a little bit like this. It's waves. And when I paste it in here, these are actually connected to the color variables in my Webflow project. You can see it here in the code where the stop color is set to this variable. And if you're wondering where to get those variables, good news, Webflow just gives them to you. If I wanted to go to any one of these variables, I can just click on the little cog and then click to copy that, paste it into the code wherever I want it to go. Now, this has really, really big implications because it means that you can make pretty advanced graphics and just have them update dynamically with whatever color system you want. Like if I just wanted to come back in here and change all of this back to your, you know, default chain lift colors, and maybe I just wanted to come in here and I don't know, I'm gonna change pink to secondary. Watch what happens. The whole thing's gonna update. LiftKit also manages the light and dark mode for you. It detects whatever your operating system is preferring at the time. So when it loads, if it's set to dark, it will use dark. But if I open up my system settings here, watch this. So you don't have to have your user rely on actually indicating that they need light versus dark mode. And I have opinions about how this was implemented here, but it just goes to show that it works. So that's just a quick demo. There's a lot that can be accomplished with this. And I guarantee you that if I hadn't been talking, this whole thing would have gone like in five minutes. So. Uh, give it a shot. You can clone the kit whenever you like and start playing around with it yourself on the Webflow Marketplace. Type lift kit. Link is also in the description. Chain lift color is available for free. Also, link in the description. I'm going to be back with more content to show off what else this thing can do, but I hope that this has got you excited to start playing around with dynamic UIs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.